Like so many things in China, the images of women are undergoing dramatic changes in film, television, and magazines. Thirty years ago, women were just emerging from the restrictive images of the Maoist era, when Chinese women were portrayed nearly always in a glorified and almost heroic way. Today, the modern Chinese woman is portrayed online, on air, and in more than 45 glossy magazines, including international brands like Elle and Cosmopolitan. Chinese women are trying to find a balancing act between tradition on one side and rampant commercialization on the other. To get one perspective on the pressures on Chinese women, we're joined by Chinese-American author and women's rights advocate Joy Chen. Uh, Chen's remarkable book, Do Not Marry Before Age 30, has gained many readers in China. It discusses the pressures on Chinese women to marry before the age of 25 or be regarded as so-called leftover women. Joy Chen, welcome to Full Frame. Thanks for coming in. Hey, it's great to be here, Mike. You say that women in China are kind of at this transitional stage. Uh, on one side, you've got the tradition, which we just kind of described. Mm. The other is to just really kind of chase their dreams, and they're trying to figure out which way forward, I guess, in some respects. Very much so. I mean, this generation of Chinese women are highly educated. Um, in many respects, they're among the world's highest educated. And Chinese women are driving business school enrollment here in the United States, if you can believe that. So on one hand, you know, women want to put all that education to work and pursue their dreams and their careers. Um, on the other hand, Chinese women now have 5,000 years of tradition crashing down on their shoulder as to the woman's role in a family and in society. So that's really the epic clash that women are facing today in China. And the interesting thing is, you're Chinese-American, you write this book, it's very open about your own life and what you went through and stuff, and it's really struck a nerve in China, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, pretty much in most big cities, first, second, and third tier cities, young women who have gone through college and are in the workforce today, um, if they haven't read the book, generally they've heard, the na they've heard of the title. Uh, do not marry before age 30 is, is um, you know, is, is a pretty well-known book in China right now. Why do you think it is? Because it's because it, they're kind of going through the same things you went through in terms of, you know, chasing the career, the ideal, and yet still the pressures of you've got to be, you've got to be, as you said, with the tradition, you've got to go on this, down this road, down this narrow pathway, so to speak. I think a lot of it is that. I mean, I think that um, in writing the book and in the success of the popularity of the book in the last um, year and a half, I've realized that women, we women around the world, um, while the circumstances of our lives may be very different, might have grown up in different places or gone to school or worked in different places, many of the big questions that we face in our lives um, are very similar. Um, so I think. One, yes, it's a sense of the common experience. But I think um, another reason is very specifically in China right now, perhaps the hottest social issue is the question of women and when they get married. So um, if you look at Weibo, um, one of the hottest terms is shengnu, or leftover women. Mm -hmm. So women are disparaged if they're not married by the time they're 25 or 27. Let, but let's talk a little bit about the magazines, because they're, they're flooding China, mm -hmm. and yet you say that there's a huge difference when you look at the magazines here and, and over there. How so? Well, if you look at the titles of some of these magazines, they'll sound very familiar. Vogue, Cosmo, Marie Claire, Elle. Uh, Madame Figaro, which is a, um, a French magazine. But when we go to China, um, I'm very active in, in, in um, the fashion magazines, both as a writer and as a subject being profiled. Um, we find that actually the content of the magazine is very Chinese. I'll give you an example. So Harper's Bazaar um, is a popular fa fashion and lifestyle magazine here in the United States. Um, in China, their sister magazine, they're allowed to use um, up to 30 percent of the content from the America magazines. And yet every issue, they use less than 10 percent of the content from abroad. Um, because the editors there say that, you know, they really want to develop content that is tailored to Chinese society and Chinese women. There's much more representation of strong women in China. Every issue of every one of these magazines will feature women scientists women businessmen who are not movie stars, mm -hmm. um, women who are really leading the way in China. Um, 
we don't see those features in the American counterparts of those magazines. Those features are mostly reserved for movie stars and other major celebrities. And part of the, and I want to talk to you about this because I think it's an interesting point and we had a chance to discuss this. You know, the commercial appeal, I want to sell as many of these magazines as I can if I'm mm -hmm. here in the United States. And, you know, maybe I'll throw in some smutty stuff or whatever and that'll maybe <laughs> sell a little bit more. But you were telling me that the editors there feel this almost enormous civic responsibility to their readers, uh, which is unique in a way. I think they really do. Um, I've been privileged to get to know many of these editors of the fashion magazines, and, um, and I think it really has to do with this moment in Chinese society. Um, there's been such a huge push towards consumerism and materialism in the last five and ten years, and women's media is really the only media where women are talking to other women. So you certainly have many of the, um, the advertising, you know, focusing on models and movie stars that we see in the American magazines. But when it comes to the editorial content, I do feel that there's, there really is a sense of civic responsibility um, among these fashion editors, mostly who are women, maybe a little bit older than their readers, to give um, their readers a sense of what total beauty is. Are we seeing a sea change? Uh not just in China, but here in the United States. I mean, when you see people who are so passionate, like Gina Davis saying, look, I saw this with my daughter, and I was upset, and now I'm talking to the studios, and then you see these young women who are, who are working in the industry. No, the images have got to be different, you know, and we can't Photoshop everything. I mean, is, it, is there a sea change underway, do you think? Um, maybe a puddle change or a pond change. I don't know about a sea change, but I think that, um, you know, Gina, Gina Davis, you know, we're all in this generation of women, we've grown up seeing these images. Now we're in our 40s, maybe in our 50s. Now we have greater positions of power. And now we're standing up and saying, let's see a broader representation of what beauty is and what strength is in a woman. All right. Well, it was a delight talking to you. Thanks so much. Great Certainly to appreciate be with it. you, Mike. Coming up next, a look at one woman's journey. It took her around the world as she documented the untold stories of inspiring women who are changing lives on a daily basis.